So today I'm in the Clio 200 and I'm on my way to a place called Birchdown Autos which is a, a, an independent Renault specialist and um, I'm going there for a few maintenance bits but uh, the reason I'm making this video is I'm also having the uh, Kony Sport suspension kit fitted. So the Kony kit comprises the Sport yellow adjustable shock absorbers uh, and a set of matched H&R springs that lower the car by, I think it's, uh, I think it's normally 30 millimeters front and rear, uh, but because this has got a cup chassis pack fitted with the lower suspension, I think it'll probably drop my car by about 20 mil front and rear. So a really subtle drop, it doesn't really need that. Uh, but more importantly, the Kony shock absorbers. So the standard car with the cut pack and the, uh, the firmer suspension makes a very engaging drive. It's um, dynamically, it's, it's pretty superb for a standard car uh, when you're driving quickly. Uh, it performs faultlessly on track with the, uh, with the standard suspension and um, on, a, on a decent road, it's, uh, it's a good car. It feels great to drive, uh, but it's not very finessed. It's kind of a, uh, it's a it's a cheap way I guess of making a car handle and drive well on twisty roads um, the dampers and the springs are, are fairly hard if uh, if not very cultured um, I don't imagine they're particularly expensive items um, and so as a, as a result the car chooses um, handling and grip over comfort uh, as you'd expect so the uh, the ride quality is, is pretty poor um, and that's something I'm hoping that the Coneys will address I'm hoping that by choosing a more expensive and better shock absorber um, I'm able to improve both the handling and, uh, and the comfort so the object of the exercise is to get the best of both worlds and hopefully the adjustable nature of that, that shock absorber will give me that. Hopefully some of these little B roads will show you that the car's pretty decent dynamically as standard with the cut pack. Um, but it should also illustrate that it's, it's quite hard um, and a little bit crashy. Pretty much perfect for illustrating that. So hopefully we'll be able to come down the same road later on, uh, and it won't be dark, and we'll be able to see how the uh, how the Coney Sport kit improves things, or or whether or not it improves things. So I'll touch briefly on why I chose the the Coney suspension kit. So I don't think it's a very popular option with the clear um, certainly not something I've, I've come across many people having used um, so this is for me it's a predominantly a road car uh, it's uh, an enjoyable second car if you like on the road a run around for my partner and I if and when we need it um, and it also doubles as a as, as an op option for track use um, so it's a so for me at least it's a fairly nice track car that I can drive to the track do some laps and drive home without too much fuss so being as this isn't a primary track car, I don't think there's ever going to be the desire to, to corner weight the car. Um, so that means that adjustable perches on the suspension um, aren't really necessary. I'm, I don't need to, to corner weight it. I don't need to set the individual corner heights in order to achieve the right, the right balance there. So that's, that means that I don't really need coilovers. And at the sort of price point that this suspension sits, the other options would be something like a super popular Bilstein B14, I think it is, which is fundamentally a front coilover using a non-adjustable um, Bilstein shock absorber um, and a rear Bilstein shock absorber with a traditional lowering spring, um, and that's what that's what most people go for um, in that sort of price range. I think the other options are H&R coilovers, I, I honestly don't know much about them, um, 
but again I don't think they're adjustable uh, so for me it, I, I sort of prioritized adjustability of the of the shock absorber over adjustability of the ride height so that's the that's primarily why I chose the the Coney's over something like the Bilstein's um, and I have used both Bilstein sport dampers and Coney sport dampers in the past and honestly the Bilstein's didn't really do quite what I hoped they were both of these were on Honda CRX's Mark II's um, and the Bilsteins were a little bit of a disappointment if I'm totally honest they they were good but they weren't as good as the um, as the Coney shock absorbers that I, that I paired with um, Ibac, I think it was lowering springs. So a good, fairly decent experiences with both. I've had other other Bilstein products and other cars and been thoroughly impressed. But on the on the one car that I could compare both, the Coney was uh, was for me a better product, um, regardless of having uh, a less technologically advanced uh, shock absorber technology. I think the uh, if you look at the technologies used, the Bilstein is is certainly superior. Um, but my experience of the Coney's is is very good, so uh, I've decided to give them a try. Right, so we're back in the Clio 200. Birch Down have done their work, and um, so now I can get a feel for what the uh, what the new suspension feels like. Um, not changed anything much apart from the suspension um, we've got some stub axle spaces at the back to space it by 10 millimeters a side uh, and some fairly modest um, toe out shims for the rear axle uh, but apart from that it's as it was uh, and immediate impressions are that it's done pretty much exactly what I hoped in terms of ride comfort um, the H&R springs, you can feel there's still a hard spring, um, you can feel that that hasn't changed, um, but the damping is undoubtedly in a completely different league. Um, you can still feel the bumps, you can probably still see some bumps in the, uh, in the video, but everything is more controlled, everything is feels less sharp and crashy um, almost completely gone is that immediate crashiness of the front axle the suspension set to full soft I understand um, and it it feels really nice um, it, it doesn't feel like a it doesn't feel like a normal car would it's not um, it's not a comfortable cruiser um, but it feels controlled and, and I don't think I'm well enough equipped to describe how it feels but having driven a lot of cars with lots of different suspensions it feels well damped it feels like it's got some quality dampers fitting just the way it, it rides and the way it, it controls itself over bumps yeah everything when you expect a big bump to come having been used to the car before it doesn't it just just absorbs it and deals with it um, so it's it's a really really positive improvement as you can see it's rained a lot since this morning so there aren't the opportunities perhaps to push on as much um, but from what I have done so far it, I'm really I'm really surprised by by the difference I think I, I can feel even on the softest setting um, I, I, I didn't expect that much of a difference from um, from the standard cup suspension so I thought being as it was quite hard as standard there maybe wouldn't be the marked improvement there I thought the the bigger difference would be the the comfort and the perhaps the, the ability down a bumpier B road or something um, but no in terms of um, I'm sure the I'm sure the grip has, has gone up it just feels that much more composed um, and um, pardon the old adage, it, it, it sort of feels like it's on rails. Um, so it, it, to drive, it, it feels closer to <laughs> what, I'd, what I'd normally expect from a car that's on decent coilovers. Uh, I think that's, that's what I'd probably liken it to. Um, yeah, yeah, I think in, on full soft as it is now, um, it, it feels like a really 
it feels like a good quality coilover setup on the road. Um, and it's nice to know that from this point it can be stiffened up so I'm sure there's more dynamic ability to be found and the ability to balance front and rear as I need to. Um, I drove a, I drove a, ooh, an FN2 Civic Type R that was on Bilstein B14 coilovers and it kind of has that same premium damped feel to it. Um, while still having good body control and um, and still still being fairly stiff. Let's see on some of these slightly twistier roads. Yeah, and it's just so oh, it's yeah, it bites. It really does. Yeah, that's lovely. That fills you with confidence. It really does. like this there's no getting away from the fact that it's got a it's got a fairly hard suspension fitted um, but it just feels like a much more more premium car now so so I've driven over a few manhole covers and things now and instead of that jarring impact it, it sort of just takes it in its stride and just absorb it just absorbs it way better than I'd hoped. This feels great. What an addictive little car. For pretty modest money that's uh, that's quite an improvement especially given it's a, a sporty suspension package to start off with. I'm really chuffed with that. It's just so confidence inspiring. I hope you can see how little grip there should be around some of these corners. There's leaves everywhere. The road is seriously wet. And I'm on Yokohama 808 R tyres, which they're good in the wet, but um, in terms of things like standing water, they're probably not as good as some. But it just feels so composed with mud everywhere. Come on, come on, drive faster. <laughs> It's actually a really nice combination of the, the better suspension and the, um, the stiffer engine mounts. They really added a lot to the car as well. They just made the responses all that more immediate. Whether it's going on the throttle, coming off, everything just feels immediate and now that the body is better controlled every movement is just so responsive and a 
of course the really really good tyres help as well what a great little car that's awesome loads of grip for the conditions